the means by which sins are forgiven is about to change. It's not going to be from an animal sacrifice. It's going to be from the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, the Son of God who lays down his life. And now sins, when they are forgiven, they're forgiven. I don't think we still understand that. <clears throat> I don't know. You know, if, if, if you took an animal and you thought your sins were really not that bad, maybe a couple doves will do to atone for my sin. But then you might be like Mike Mulvaney and think, I need a lamb. Two doves aren't going to do it. Bigger. Yeah. And it's like, I, I need to bring the whole herd in. You know? And, and we, start to, so we start to get a little understanding of the, the depth of our shame and sin is kind of commensurate with what kind of sacrifice we bring. And I, I think that's just kind of human. But when we get a revelation of who Jesus is, one drop of his blood is more than enough to atone for all the sin of the world. The enemy keeps getting us messed up because we think, well, I've asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to come into my heart. And I, I've made him Lord of my life. But you know, I had an impure thought this week. I, I said some bad words. I did something. And all of a sudden, the enemy jumps on that and says, and you call yourself a Christian. <laughs> Do you not realize that what Jesus did is not enough, you need to do something else. You need to do some penance. And so now, let's give you some penance. Do this. Say this. Serve this. Somehow, work to atone for your sin. And we don't understand the power of the supremacy of the blood of Christ, the Lamb of God, without blemish, is more than enough for all your sins, past, present, and future. It's by faith. It's not about your performance. It's about what you believe and who you've received. Receive the Lord and the forgiveness that He gives. And you'll be doing pretty good. My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations but you've made it a den of robbers. We find in Isaiah chapter 56, I'm going to read a couple verses before we get to the ones that will go on the screen. Isaiah 56, talking about the foreigner who is coming to the temple. It's talking about the eunuch. Here's what he says. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely exclude me from his people. Can't say the Lord's going to exclude me, you Gentiles. Mm -mm. And let not any eunuch complain, I'm only a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant. To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. Wow. Wow. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. The foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord and to worship him, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them my joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others, still others, to them besides those who are already gathered. Our Father wants a big family. He's an includer, not an excluder. He will bring in as many from the highways and the byways to come in and celebrate at the wedding feast of the Lamb. And so we see the breaking of, of the Lord Jesus' heart 
with how the temple is being run, the Gentiles are being excluded and they're not even given a, a sacred space to worship and to pray. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 11. Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I've been watching, declares the Lord. Nothing passes the Lord. He sees what has been going on in the temple. He, know, he knew when it was, was working the way it was supposed to, and he saw the way in which it drifted into all sorts of nonsense that grieved his heart. God has always had a heart for his people. But not just the Jews, but for all people. The Jews were supposed to be the priests, the ones who brought the rest of the nations into relationship with Father God. And we find this interesting considering that Mark is the gospel that is primarily written to Gentiles. So we don't have a whole lot of Old Testament scriptures that are being fulfilled. So this is good news today. Jesus comes, talks to a fig tree, leaves, goes in, upsets business as usual in the temple, tables, benches, money changing, all of that gets changed. And it's based on the authority. <clears throat> there is no doubt that they are finally getting that Jesus is not in any way doing the messianic secret anymore, that he's the Messiah. He's come in on the donkey, the procession of the Messiah. He now come to the temple, the home of his father, and he rearranged the furniture and set things back in order. And then he spent the rest of the day teaching. And when it was all over, the boys got together and his disciples and they left and went back to Bethany to spend the night. The good news, a lot of our religiousness is no longer the basis for our relationship with God. Our relationship with God is based on a relationship with His Son who loved us and gave Himself for us, who had the authority to change things. <clears throat> One of the things that we do here is, Lord, what do you want to change? What needs to be changed? What do we need to do to come into alignment so that the manifestation of your kingdom will be unhindered here? We want your kingdom to come and your will to be done here, just as it is in heaven. See, our, our, our mandate is to bring heaven to earth. So we got some things to do, don't we? First of all, repentance. I've got a devotional that every night it calls me to repent for my sins for the day. <clears throat> and when I first got it, I thought, I don't know if I agree with these folks and their theology of needing for repentance and all this kind of stuff. But as I've continued in it, it's amazing. Because it's not me trying to dig up dirt on me. It's me just presenting myself before the Father and saying, Father, is there anything that you would like to adjust? Is there anything that I've done today that really hasn't been exemplary of your heart? And you know, there's almost always something that has happened. And it's like, okay, Lord, thank you 